Yo, what's up everyone? My name's Dave and you suck at programming. Today, we're gonna talk about process substitution versus command substitution, specifically for the Bash shell. I'm sure some, I'm sure some of these concepts apply for other shells, but we're gonna talk about Bash specifically today. Uh, so let's jump into it. Let's talk about what am I actually talking about? So in this simple example here, we have name equals backtick, who am I, backtick. This is a little contrived. There are other ways to get your current username, but here's what we're doing. Name equals backtick, who am I? Backtick. So we echo dollar name. It should be the output of that command. The command is who am I? We run it and it just says Dave. That's awesome. If I run who am I, the command right here, we get Dave. So that's all it did. This syntax is super simple. It says run this command and replace it with whatever the standard output of that command was. So name the variable got set to whatever the standard output of who am I was. Very simple, you've probably seen that before. And if you've seen that, you've probably seen this syntax. Instead of using the back ticks, you can use the dollar sign open paren and close paren. This is a newer syntax. When I say newer, I still mean it's decades old at this point, but it's newer. It is, um, I believe it is POSIX compatible now. Um, but yeah, so use this syntax, prefer this syntax. It should work exactly the same, but the beauty of this syntax is when you start nesting things, there are way better rules for having nested this syntax, where it's like this, than having like nested backticks and you have to escape things, blah, 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 I'm meandering. You run the script, we should get exactly the same thing. Hey, that's awesome. So what's the next thing? We have command args here. So in this example, I'm doing printf, percent s with a new line and I have a less than and greater than there's nothing special about those less than and greater than that is just for us to see and we're going to give it the uptime command so if you've never seen the uptime command it's pretty useful it tells you how long your system's been up it's a way to get load averages and stuff like that you can see there's a bunch of data there separated by spaces so what happens when we run that we get everything, okay? So command substitution gave us that string back, but I'll show you what the script looks like so you can reference it at the same time. So it ran the command, got the output, and then the output was passed into this format specifier, which gets repeated for each argument. So each argument was being passed to printf like this. And you might think, okay, well, how do I avoid this situation? Of course, it's very simple. Just quote it, quote your expansion. No different than you would quote a variable expansion. You put quotes around this thing, and now when you run it, we get one big argument with all of the data that was the output of that one command. Hey, simple, that makes perfect sense. You use, that's called command substitution. We use that syntax, command substitution, to run the command and replace it with the standard out of that command. So the whole command has to run, we get all of the standard out. So what goes on here? Notice instead of the dollar sign, we have that less than sign. This is called process substitution. So we're using uname instead. So the uname command is just gonna print Darwin, super simple. We're gonna run this and it's going to echo it. Remember that? What is going on there? I'll show you the code so you can cross reference it. We're echoing uname, but we got this. What is that? That's not the output of uname. And that's the thing, it's not the output of new name. Take a look at this. Instead of echo, let's do cat. Cat's going to get that weird thing, that dev FD or whatever it was, and now we get Darwin. So what's going on there? This is not getting replaced by the standard out of your name. It's getting replaced by the name of a file that Cat will get, that if Cat reads that file, it will get the streaming output of the uname command. I mean, technically it might be a pipe. I don't actually know what type of file it is. You know what, now that I say that out loud, let's actually find out what kind of file it is. Because if I echo uname, it gives us the name of the file. I could actually just gstat it. And where do we have it? It is a FIFO. Look at this, FIFO. So it is a pipe, it's not a regular file. Um, okay, let's get back on track here. <laughs> So we ran that example, we get the output of it. It gets replaced by a file name, which happens to be a, fi a FIFO, which is a named pipe that exists on your system. Cat can read that file and that file will get replaced by the standard out of the command that's being run in that syntax. Why is that useful? Because what if we have large data? So here's an example of large data. We're gonna grep for the name Dave out of user share dict words. That is a word dictionary that exists on my system. You may or may not have it on your system. It has 235,000 lines of words in there. So it's a large file. We're gonna grep for the word Dave in it and we're gonna loop over it line by line using this here string notation. So all of this stuff, all of the output of grep is stored in a variable that has new lines in it. And we're gonna loop over that variable and find where it says Dave. So let's go ahead and run this. Okay. It ran pretty fast, but there was like a little bit of a pause there. It had to cache the whole thing in memory. It had to store the whole thing in memory before we looped over it line by line. Let's talk about, by contrast, why process substitution is useful. Look at this example. We have this, a little bit contrived of an example, but take a look at this. We're gonna tell it to read in from a file. What's the name of the file we're reading from? This, because remember that will be a FIFO, and that will have the output of this command in a streaming fashion. So the benefit of that is, 
it will flood in as it becomes available. There wasn't much here, even though it's a relatively big file, it's still pretty fast for computers to chug through this. But this is super useful. That's the difference between command and process substitution. So if I show the two examples again, let's do 06 and 07. This is great. This command substitution is great when you can fit the whole thing in a variable comfortably. The whole thing's gonna be read into memory and you're not worried about it. This is also useful because I can get the exit code of grep. When this next line moves on, I know that grep has finished. By contrast, if I go over here, I can stream a lot of data. Maybe I have a tail dash F that's running or I'm curling some sort of interface where I don't know how much data is there. That's the beauty of this. I can start processing input before the command's done. Because I'm processing input before the command's done, we don't have an exit code. I can't tell you if grep was successful or not until it's done and we're processing lines before it may be done. So that's why you gotta pick one over the other. You gotta pick which one makes sense. If you could fit the whole thing comfortably in a memory, Command substitution is probably for you. If you want to have something in a streaming fashion, you don't care about the exit code, or you have ways of dealing with it yourself, process substitution is the way to go. That's the difference between the two. Yo, and of course, I want to give a shout out to my members over at Patreon. Thank you so much for supporting the uh, channel. If you want your name at the end of my videos like this, go ahead and check out my Patreon. You can sign up there. Uh, I don't pay well any content, but it's a cool way of uh, showing that you will support me and you get your name at the end of my video. So that's pretty cool. Check it out. We have 11 members of one tier, 14 of the other, 19 of the other. If you add them up, it doesn't actually equal 46, but it still says there's 46 active members. Not really sure what's going on with that, but uh, this code is open source. So hopefully someone can figure it out for me why it's 44 and somehow says 46 i don't know i can dig into that later that's super funny uh yeah thank you